urge as an ocean wave and to try and use your breath as a surfboard to let the wave pass without being wiped out by it, without giving into it. And, uh, other kinds of meditation strategies that are more like breathing meditation. But we also teach our clients uh, breath meditation, body scan meditation. We give them uh, in this course, which is a, an eight-week uh, outpatient-based group program, uh, access to a number of different meditation strategies, a sort of a menu of strategies, so that hopefully they can apply some of them uh, and see if it works for them. Another one, for example, is called Sober. It's a breathing space. So you're on the verge of doing something you're trying not to do. Sober says S. Stop what you're doing. O, observe mindfully what's happening. E, expand your awareness so that you have a bigger picture of what's happening and what would happen if you take that drug or whatever. Um, and R, respond mindfully. So you have a choice there. To sit at the bedside, try to be present. And that, through that process, uh, I guess, uh, do, you know, learning, uh, working with my teachers and so on, uh, one starts to uh, learn how to uh, attend to things each day, each moment, the simplicity of things. And so, uh, Alan was talking about how the next thing, the next addiction, well, when I examine myself, I sometimes feel like it's this, there's this, always this leaning forward kind of thing, the next activity, the next thing. And everything really happens in the present moment, but it's very elusive to me. So. So this process of, of, of being mindful and tracking my own experiences through introspective alertness and, and, and really trying to drop down in awareness, um, I think the, the, the beauty of it is, is I, I begin to see uh, not only my own experiences, but when sitting with someone at the bedside, um, it's not him and me or her. And it, there's just this, there can be a sense of just suffering is present. It's not, it's not focused on separation. And I was uh, assigned to the ICUs, uh, where approximately half the patients died. So I got to deal with death there. And that was difficult in that there's a lot of grief dealing with death. And I didn't know how to process my grief. So it took me a while to learn to do that. Um, also in that year of training, I worked in the pain clinic. I was visiting the inpatients in the hospital who the pain center doctors were visiting. And it seemed to me with them, I learned how to hold hands and be present to their experience and work with their energy. Um, I was curious about mindfulness and how to apply that in that situation, but I didn't have a sense of how it was done. Um, and then I went to, uh, finally concluded with working in the psych ward, and this felt like coming home. <laughs> they found some peace without medications. And they found some peace that they could reproduce on their own. Uh, some stillness of the mind. Some tolerance for, say, the voices that they were hearing. I noticed one day, as I was wondering, what sustains me? Oh, I believe in reincarnation. That actually helps me to be with people who are dying. Because I don't see that as quite the tragedy, that quite the final and that people, some people might. This is my second year to teach a grief and loss class at Bastyr, and I'm, um, it's been really fun because I'm supposed to be teaching this sort of very academic kind of clinical class, but I'm just teaching them how to meditate. Um, and, you know, as long as, <laughs> as long as nobody really notices, I'm going to keep doing it. Um, because I think it's very helpful for medical students to um, understand their own suffering because as clinicians, unless we really investigate our own suffering, it's very difficult for us to be with others who are suffering. So, and I'm also using a book called Secondary Trauma, and this is a local gal 
Laura Vanderut Lipsky is her name, and Vander Newt Lipsky is the author. Um, it's very interesting stuff. Um, people who are um, in disaster situations and those helpers that are helping them become traumatized by what they see. And in my field, of course, in obstetrics, especially in hospitals, um, what I see with the residents and the nurses, they're all traumatized by the births that are happening in the hospitals constantly. And therefore, there's a lot of fear around birth. America, Americans are extremely afraid of birth. But when I'm working with a mom in labor, I remind her that in each hour of her labor, she's actually going to be out of pain more than she's in pain. Because labor is episodic. Contractions come and they go. And, you know, a contraction lasts for 60 seconds or 90 seconds, maybe max. And then she's got a break of two or three minutes. So can she be with the contraction when it's occurring? And can she be with the not contraction when it's occurring? Um, I actually had just attended a, a training down in California with a, Nancy, a gal named Nancy Bardicke, who's using Cabot's Inn's work to teach childbirth education. And I came back and went to a labor, and this lady was having a lot of problems doing either future or past within her labor. She's like, oh, that contraction was terrible. I'm really afraid of the next one, and just working herself up. And I suggested to her that perhaps she could rest really rest and be present for the times when she was not having a contraction. Because I know that deeply, contractions are not going to kill you. And so I suggested to this mother that she be with the contraction. Can you be present to this contraction? Okay, now it's gone. Can you be with the not contraction? This space in between. And she was able to do that. And at some point later on in her um, in her early postpartum, I called her to ask her how she was doing, and she said, you know, we're just having a contraction kind of day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought, how wonderful that she was able to use it in the moment. Um, and, of course, really where I'm interested now in working is with students, is with midwifery students. Because, like I said before, I think it's incredibly important that we as healers, or whatever we're calling ourselves, as, as witnesses to this process, really understand the depth of our own suffering. Because that really makes a difference when we are sitting with people who are suffering. It's, as I forget which one of you said this, but it's not you and me. It's, it's, it's just the suffering is present. It's just what is happening right now.